In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at what are called the primary trigonometric ratios. And there actually are six altogether. Uh, there's three primary, and then there's three other ones as well. Um, they're called the reciprocal ones, but we're only going to deal with the primary ones in this tutorial. So before we get into what they are, um, any right angle triangle um, always we always refer to a particular reference angle and I'm going to use this angle symbol theta here uh, it's a Greek letter it's often used to represent some unknown angle it's just a convention that's used we could use any symbol we wanted really uh, but uh, if you see theta in a triangle it's it's probably meant to reference an angle so I'm talking about this angle here I could have talked about this angle here um, and I'll, in some of the examples, I'll put the angle up here instead of down here. It's not always going to be the one on the bottom. And so in, in this triangle, the uh, hypotenuse side is the one that's across from the right angle. It's always the longest side in the right triangle. So that's the hypotenuse side. The other side that's right beside the angle, see the hypotenuse is actually beside the angle. Uh, this is the other side right here that's beside our reference angle, and that's the adjacent side. We use the word adjacent because adjacent means beside. And then the, uh, the other side, the one that's across from the angle, we don't call it the across side. It's called the opposite side because it's opposite uh, the angle in the triangle. So this is the opposite side here. So those are the three names of the sides in the right triangle. Hypotenuse is across the right angle. And then there's an adjacent side beside your reference angle. And there's an opposite side across from the angle. Now, if my angle theta had been up here, then these would switch. Because if that was where my theta was, then this would be the adjacent side. Because it's beside the angle now. And then we would call this the opposite. Because it would be across from that angle. So... The sine ratio, and sine is spelt S-I-N-E, it's, it's abbreviated S-I-N, it looks like the word sin, is defined as the ratio of the opposite side to, to the hypotenuse. So the ratio of this side to this side is the called the sine of the angle. And again, it's, uh, that's the abbreviations used. If you look at any scientific calculator, you'll see S-I-N somewhere on it. The cosine ratio is defined as the ratio of the length of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So we write cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Those are the normal abbreviations for these three words. And the, the last one, the tangent ratio, is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent. Now, here's the connection to uh, linear relations. Um, the tangent ratio, if we put this on an xy coordinate grid, the tangent ratio is actually the same as the slope because um, for this triangle, this would be the rise and this would be the run. Okay, so the opposite side is the same as the rise, the adjacent side is the same as the run. So the tangent ratio, if you put it in an xy grid, is actually the same as the slope. So the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios are called the primary trigonometric ratios. And here's a way to remember them SOKATOA. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. If you can remember that, you can remember that the, and so this is how the acronym goes, the S here, it goes S-O-H, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. C-A-H in the middle means that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the T-O-A in the end means that tan is opposite over adjacent. So just remember how to spell so ka to a Okay, so that's a way to remember which ratio is which. So we're going to take a look at some examples on this page and the next one of how you use uh, the trigonometric ratios to find unknown sides and angles. The first one here, we're not going to find an angle or a side. We're just asked to write the three primary trig ratios for this angle. So here's my theta here. And we're given in this triangle that this is 4.6, this is 1.8, and this is 4.9. So if we're asked to rate the sine, cosine, and tan of this particular angle. So we need to identify which sides hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. So the 1.8 here is across from the angle, so we would call that the opposite side. The 4.6 is beside the angle, but it's not the hypotenuse. This would be the hypotenuse up here. 
So if we're talking about this angle here, this is adjacent, that's opposite, and that's hypotenuse. So to write out the sine of the angle, and when you write out a sine or a cos or tan, there's always an angle in some degree measure or a, a symbol here after the sine or cos or tan. You never write sine with nothing here and it equals or cos with nothing here and it equals. It's always a sine of some angle or cos of some angle or tan of some angle. So the opposite side is the 1.8, the uh, hypotenuse is the 4.9, so the sine of the angle would be, and we would actually take our calculator and just divide them. So I would just go 1.8 8 divided by 4.9. Whoops, why is my calculator not working? And so let's uh, bring the calculator over here. So I would just divide 1.8 by 4.9. And I, I wrote four decimal places. I usually tell my students to write four decimal places. I mean, unless it stops after one or two or th three. Um, to keep accuracy. Uh, if you run this too quickly, like we could actually use this to find an angle, and we'll do that actually in the next example. Uh, if you round this ratio too, uh, too quickly, um, then you could be off by degrees. Okay, so that's why I keep uh, several decimal places here. For the, um, the, the cosine one, cosine ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'd be dividing the 4.6 by the 4.9. And so again, 4.6 divided by 4.9 works out to 0.9388. Uh, notice I have the approximate symbol here. Uh, there are other decimal places. Okay, so that's why the use of that symbol. Same idea over here. Uh, tan is opposite over adjacent, so we divide be dividing the 1.8 by the 4.6. And 1.8 divided by 4.6 is to four decimal places, 0.3913. So that's how you write out uh, just the the sine or cos or tan of an angle. Uh, you can use that to find the, uh, the angle for the triangle, uh, but we're going to do that in the second example here. So in number two, um, what you do, if, if you're asked to find an angle, then you have to know two sides. You could know all three, I suppose, but you have to know at least two. So label the sides. Um, this side right here in reference to the angle would be called the adjacent because it's beside. And this side here would be the hypotenuse because it's across in the right angle. So identifying the sides that you know or are working with tells you whether you're using sine or cos or tan. The only trig ratio up here, if you look at these, that uses adjacent and hypotenuse is this one here. So that's why I would use the cosine to find the angle here. I couldn't use the sine because it needs the opposite angle, and I don't know that yet. Now, I suppose I could use Pythagoras' theorem to find that side, and that would work. Then I could use the sine ratio. But um, just using these, I would have to use the cosine ratio. So we would substitute the 12.6 in here and the 15 kilometers in place of the hypotenuse. And you don't need to write the units, because if I write km here and km here, those units just divide out, and I'm still left with 12.6 over 15. So it's not necessary to write units. So I would take my uh, calculator now, and I would divide 12.6 by 15. And so now in this case, I only get is exactly 0 0.84. There, there's zeros after that, so we don't have to worry about writing other numbers. Now, what you do to find, and I'll, I'll do this in the presentation first, what you do to find the angle is, if you notice on my triangle here, I've got, here's my sine and cos and tan. Right here, it says sine, it looks like sine to the power of negative 1, cos to the power of negative 1, tan. So those are the functions on the calculator that are used to find angles. So if we know that the uh, the cosine ratio, whatever our angle is, is 0.84, I go, and of course, make sure you're in degrees in your calculator. There's three ways to measure angles. Radians, degrees, there's gradients too. This one doesn't do gradients, but uh, so I would go, I know using cosine, so I have to go second cosine, my 0.84. 
and that will tell me my angle is 32.8, etc. degrees. Now, um, in most applications, a degree is a pretty accurate uh, angle measurement because there's 360 of them in a circle. Okay, so there's lots. So I would normally just round this, round this to 33. So the angle is 33 degrees. Um, I could have up here, we could have up here found this angle here. Uh, so here I would have gone second sine of this. 0.3673. So the angle is about 21 and a half degrees. And, and of course, I could have used any of them. If I did the cosine, I'd go second cos 0.9388. And I should get the same angle. Well, it's pretty close. You see, these are actually rounded. That's why it's not exactly the same answer. Uh, let's do the tan one here. Uh, 0.3913. Okay. So that one is pretty close to the same thing. So these are actually rounded. There are more decimal places here. If I'd taken, it would have been more accurate. And these angles would have been even closer to one another. So let's move on to the last page in the last three examples. So in uh, number three here, asked to find uh, side H. And so uh, the idea um, is, first of all, you label the sides you're working with, the sides you know, and the sides you want to find. So in this triangle, the uh, H side, now remember, it's just an H. It's not hypotenuse. This would actually be the hypotenuse side. So I just label it with H. That's the opposite side, opposite this angle. Okay, so it's across from. The 3.2 I know, and, and that's the adjacent side because it's beside the 58 degree angle. So I'm working with opposite and adjacent. So think back to your Soka Toa. Uh, tan is opposite over adjacent. So that's why I would be working with a tan ratio. So we fill in place of uh, the opposite side, the H, and the adjacent is the 3.2. And when when trying to solve these, the ratio has a denominator of 1. So to, to solve for h, h is right here. It would be the product of the 3.2 and the tan of 58 and then divided by 1. Because remember, that's the cross multiplying. That's the thing that's across from the h. So I could write a dividing by 1 here, but I don't need to. So I'll bring my calculator back and 3.2. Point two. Now, I don't actually have to type in the times, but I will in this case. So uh, about 5.1 would be the length of h. Now, just to show you, depending on your calculator, uh, if you wanted to find the tan of 58 first, and then multiply that by the 3.2, you do get exactly the same thing. One thing to be careful here, some people will write the tan of 58 times 3.2. And here's a caution. If I do this, and I'm kind of sloppy and don't remember to close my bracket, okay, notice that's not giving me the right answer. Because according to order of operations uh, in the calculator here, I, it's actually going to multiply these two numbers first and then take the tan of that. Uh, oh, and I did type 5.8, I guess, too, didn't I? 58, just to show that this does not work. Okay, uh, point. You know that's certainly not 5.1. So uh, if I wanted to type in this and close the bracket and then multiply by 3.2, that will work. Okay, that will give me the correct 5.1. Uh, I like to put the the number out front here, so then it's certainly not confused with multiplying it by the angle before you take the tan or sine or cos. So just be cautious of that. Uh, example number four, we're asked to find angle theta. So here's my angle theta. And again, you know two sides. So identify what those sides are. This side right here is across in the right angle, right angle. So that's the hypotenuse. This one is straight across the uh, triangle from that angle. So we would call that the opposite side. And the trig ratio that uses against Soka Toa that uses opposite and hypotenuse is the sine ratio. So that's why I would use the sine ratio. So I, again, always identify your sides, and then that will tell you whether you're using sine or cos or tan. So we fill in the values 
the opposite side is the 0.9, the hypotenuse is the 1.4, and we would uh, divide 0.9 by 1.4, and we'll bring the calculator back again here, 0.9 divide 1.4, so that's where that number comes from, the 0.6429, so we would take the inverse sine of that, and I'll put up the PowerPoint first, so we would take the uh, inverse sine of 0.6429. So almost exactly 40 degrees. So there's my theta angle there. One last example, number five, it says they're asked to find the length of side B. So again, identify the, uh, and I'm actually going to introduce a convention that's used a lot in trigonometry here. Um, we normally use uh, capital letters to represent angles, and then the their lowercase counterpart is the across side. So this is angle A up here, so this would be side A. If this is angle B, then that's side B. If this is angle C, then that's side C there. So that's used a lot in trigonometry, uh, lowercase for sides, uppercase for, le for angles. So identify the, uh, the sides that we know and want to find. So this would actually be called the, uh, the, the one we're finding is the hypotenuse. And this would be the opposite side, uh, opposite the 65. Uh, I could label the um, A down here as the adjacent, but I don't need to because I'm not working with it. So opposite and hypotenuse, again, is uh, the sine ratio. So that's why we're using sine. So we fill in the values. The uh, opposite side is the 0.75. And the hypotenuse is label B here. And so we're going to solve for B here. So again, there's a denominator of 1 here. So B the b here would be equal to the product of 1 and 0.75, which is 0.75, divided by the thing across from, diagonally across from the b, divided by the sine of 65. So that's how I'm isolating for b here. Again, we multiply the two things on the diagonal that we know. 1 times 0.75 is 0.75. And we divide by the thing across from, the, which is the sine 65, across from what we're trying to find, the b. So that's the uh, calculation. So 0 0.75 divided by the sine of 65 degrees will give us, uh, it would round to 0.83 if we're rounding to a couple decimal places. This is two decimal places, so I'll round that to two decimal places as well. So the length of the hypotenuse here would be 0.83 millimeters. And that's the end of the tutorial.